Welcome back to HANA Basics for Developers. So we've spent the past three videos looking at different types and ways to create calculation views. And I hope you have a better appreciation for the power and capabilities of calculation views. But let's talk about how we might use those calculation views. Of course, one way is to use reporting tools, uh, like we mentioned, Lumera, uh, business objects, third-party tools to, to connect to HANA and use those as the uh, source of, uh, of their reporting. And that's pretty common. The other really common way that you can use calculation views and expose them to the user interface and the end user is to wrap them in an OData service. And we're going to see a lot more about OData services later when we get to the application server layer. But, uh, you know, it's basically enough to know right now that we're going to want to, to take some of the calculation views that we have and, um, and wrap them in OData services. Now, this used to be um, a pretty straightforward process. Uh, we would create an XSO data document, and we could just give it the name of the calculation view, and it would generate a... Um, an OData service for that. But as we transition away from XSO data, it kind of becomes, um, uh, it's feature complete and we're not gonna do anything new with it. Uh, we transition over to core data and services as our main mechanism for creating OData services. It has a really easy mechanism to also just generate or, or have a built-in uh, OData service in either Node or Java. Uh, for existing database artifacts, but it expects that database artifact to be defined within CDS. And that's okay if we were creating our table or SQL views in CDS, but what about artifacts that we've created outside of CDS? For instance, those tables or views that we created with HTTP table or HTTP view? Or more importantly, what about our calculation views? We don't wanna have to give up the power of the calculation view, just to create an OData service. Well, luckily there's uh, an approach that we can use to kind of import existing database artifacts, including calculation views, into CDS. Now, this can be just a little tricky because right now it's kind of a labor intensive process. We have to create uh, an entity in CDS with the exact same name as the database artifact and we have to redefine the metadata, so the columns and their data types, because CDS can't go to the database yet and directly read the metadata from there. It can only read the metadata that's, at, uh, that's defined within CDS. So it causes us to have to do a little extra work, um, but this is something that uh, we hope to improve in the, in the near future, give, a, give us some time, and I'm sure we'll improve this so it's, it's more of an automated import process like we had with the old HDB CDS. Uh, there we could just say, basically import object name, and it would, it would bring it all in. Uh, but for now, we're going to see how we can do this in the interim with the, uh, with the new CDNS, uh, kind of by creating almost like a proxy entity that doesn't actually get created by CDS, um, but will connect up to the underlying database uh, object. All right, uh, so let's, um, let's begin by creating a new calculation view. Let's go back over to the web IDE. And actually, I don't want to create the whole thing from scratch. Uh, well, we'll start here by coming to the models and saying new calculation view. And this is going to be uh, expose some buyer data. So that's what we'll call it, buyer. And it's a dimensional standard. We'll say create. And uh, I don't want to go through the whole process of, of, of modeling this. We've seen that process. Um, I'll show you. We can also open the raw code editor, which just gives us the raw XML of the, um, of the calculation view. And uh, I'm just going to come over here to where I have already have this content. So go to my master branch DB source models and go to buyer. And let's go ahead. 
and bring in that source code. There we go. There's the whole calculation view. I'll save it. If you want to uh, then make sure it looks okay, we can open it in the calculation view editor and we can see, yes, it just takes and, and joins business partner and address data and then it exposes it to the outside. We can see which uh, columns we have mapped. Pretty straightforward. Basically, we want to be able to expose an OData service with the buyer details, including the addresses. Uh, so this is a quick way to prepare the, the join and expose the columns we want. Uh, so let's just go ahead and build that. And while that's building, um, well, let's let's wait a second. Let's let it finish building. We'll go test it just to make sure that it's okay before I move on to the next step. I wouldn't I wouldn't have to if I trusted that everything was good with it. I could go ahead and just start developing the the consumption of it. But I like to uh, I like to bounce over and make sure it looks good before I really use it. So let's come here to buyer. And let's say open data and raw data. And there we are. Business partners, email addresses, addresses. Yeah, that looks good, just like it should. All right, now we want to prepare it. Um, so what we need to do, the, the name here that we have, if you if you remember, let's, let's go back over here. I shouldn't have went away from it so fast. The name here is core.models, colon, colon, and then uppercase buyer. That's going to be a problem because in CDS, remember, we don't have complete control over the name of objects. So I, even if I give it a namespace, I can't get this upper lowercase. I can't get the colon colon in between there. And I need a CDS entity that's going to have the exact same name. Well, luckily, there's a way that we can give an alias name to this object. We can create a synonym for it. Just like we used synonyms earlier to point to objects outside of our container, they actually can be used within the same container as well, and, and just to give an object a different name, a shorter name, a, a different name, in this case, a name that's going to comply with the, uh, with the CDS standards. So, you know, it's not like I've got to go back and remodel existing views, and maybe rename them, copy them, or something like that if I need to adjust them so that they um, will conform. I can just come here and uh, let's create a new synonym file. And uh, I'm going to call this one local because these are synonyms that are going to be local to my container. And we'll choose our object. So here's our buyer. Yeah, I don't need the schema name in there, and I don't want the database name. But I've got to give it a name. Well, let's give it a nice short name. Let's just call it buyer. Let's take the uh, namespace part off there and the colon colon. Now it's going to be all uppercase, short name. That's going to work great in CDS. And uh, once again, let's just build that real quick. Once again, uh, I wouldn't have to. I, I could do all the development along the way. But also for educational purposes, I like to I like to show all the steps and make sure everything's working. Uh, I would hate to make a mistake and then not ca catch it to the very end. Uh, so let's uh, let's just check this real quick. So now when I go back over here, go back into my synonyms. So now I have a synonym named buyer. We can see where it points back to our container and and the long name. And we do the open data. Yep, still works. There's the data. Looks good. So I know my synonym access to the uh, calculation view is fine as well. So now what we want to do is um, we want to create a new CDS file. Remember our data model.cds, that's our entry. Uh, but we don't want to uh, clog it up with a whole bunch of extra stuff. Uh, so let's just, uh, just like we created purchase order in a separate CDS file, let's go ahead and create another one. So let's call this uh, import.cds. There we are, and uh, I've, I've prepared a code snippet here. So let's uh, see. Nobody wants to watch me type any more than you have to, right? Yeah. Let's go here, let's get the snippets, and then we want to go exercise two, and then I called this CDS two dot text. No, nope. maybe I didn't. I go? Oh. Uh, Exercise two, 
cvs2.txt, sorry. And let's go ahead and bring this in. And what we have here, I'm defining an entity. I give it that same matching name, buyer. And then I have to define all the columns with all the same names as my underlying view. So if I go back here and I were to compare this to the view and look at the semantic layer, you see I have uh, same column names, so they have to match. And the data types need to match, okay? Because remember, CDS is not going to go to the database and read the data types and the metadata there. It's only going to read the metadata that we put in here. Now, the little bit of magic that makes this work is actually this annotation that I have right here, the at CDS persistence exist. And we're telling the CDS compiler, don't recreate this object in the database. It already exists. So it will create the metadata so that it's uh, able, we could then use this, um, this entity even in other entities. We could add associations to it and all kinds of stuff like that. But it won't try to recreate the object in the database because that would um, would obviously give us a, an error because the object already exists okay now um, this isn't limited to just calculation views um, we could uh, use this against regular SQL views as well so uh, so I tell you what let's save this and let's come here to data purchase order and uh, Let's see, let's create a new view here. Uh, database artifact, let's give it a name of purchase order item view. And notice, I, I'm going to obey the rules for CDS up front. I'm going to give it all uppercase uh, letters. Uh, so that way I don't have to create the synonym. I, I could um, if I if I wanted to do the same thing, but I, I'm just gonna I'm gonna cheat here a little and just make sure that it has a compliant name to begin with. That, that makes things simpler if you can do that. And let's grab the code for this. U2.txt. So here we are, we're gonna create a SQL view. Uh, just selecting from header and item using the association of the underlying tables that's fine and now let's bring this into our cds file cds3 and what we'll see here is not only do we have buyer but I've also added some reusable types and uh, use those to define, redefine the entity of my purchase order item view, uh, which, uh, which we created here in the HDB view, but also to go ahead, oh, and I've got a little repeating here just because of the, I already have fire in there, but then I have it here. And then uh, let's go ahead and also create something for this user details that's that's one of the synonyms that we created earlier um, remember that was to our uh, our user module so we're gonna create a, a CDS wrapper phantom entity for this user details as well and for our currency table okay so go ahead and save that that looks good. And now we just have to add this to our main data model. So if I come here and I say using from B and import. And I used the wrong quote type. I want a single quote and not a double quote. Editor's too smart for me there. There we go. I'll save that, and now we can uh, do the build CDS, and that will regenerate, uh, recompile the CDS entities, and now I can do a build on the database module.
and when this finishes, we're a little too early to really see the impact of what we did. You're kind of going to have to trust me that uh, this is important for something that we're going to do later. Uh, eventually, we will extend this. Uh, remember, way back in the beginning, we also generated this SRV module. That's going to be our Node.js OData services. Eventually, we're going to take these entities that we just added to CDS, and we're going to expose them as uh, as OData. We're not quite ready to do that yet. You know, there's some more concepts that we have to get through. There's some more database development that we wanted to do. But while we were here talking about calculation views, I, I wanted to go ahead and broach the subject, show you how to bring them into CDS, so that later we will be able to wrap those in OData services. It, it all come together um, uh, down the road if you keep watching the, the videos. Uh, but this is, um, like I said, uh, although it may be a little bit of a uh, cumbersome process to have to redefine the entities. We do plan to make this better in the future, but in the interim, this is still a very powerful way to take your existing database artifacts and very quickly bring them into the uh, core data and services world, which ultimately allows us to build OData services for them and Fury annotations and, and use them in modern Fury UI applications.